I'd like to read a card from George and Shirley Pratt. It says, thanks, people like you who show they care are very special and very rare. We just want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart for all of you at Atkins, for the calls, for the prayers, for the visits, for all the wonderful food that you brought us. May God bless you all of all that you did to help us through this very hard time. We love this church, George and Shirley Pratt. This was in the passing of George's daughter, Diane McCarty, this past week. So please be much in prayer for them. Uh, a few more announcements. Uh, Brother Ray, uh, our Nugget King, is going to have surgery tomorrow uh, on his leg at Tanova. So what time are they doing that, right? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Please be much in prayer for him. Brother Larry Wood got to go home this week. Still not doing real good. Uh, they don't know what caused him to pass out and to fall and hit his head and have a brain bleed. And they're still working on that, so please be much in prayer for Larry. Uh, <coughs> Sister Iva Jones had a really good week this week, and Brother Larry's back there with us again. So thank you for the prayers for her from uh, Larry and Iva. We pray that she will continue to get better and better and better. And before long, she can be back here at church with us. Uh, Jackson Igo got to go home from the hospital uh, in Cincinnati for the first time in a long, long time. So please be much in prayer for Jackson <clears throat> as he starts his life over again, hopefully, that God will richly bless him. It's good to see uh, Brother Jimmy Humphreys with us this morning. Uh, please, as he goes through his cancer treatment, <coughs> Brother Gene, as he goes through his, Danny's not here, he's not feeling really well. Uh, as he's gone through his cancer treatments, please remember him. But we just got so much to be in prayer for this morning <coughs> and so much to be thankful for. Uh, I want to thank the church, especially all the ladies and the men that cooked. Our Thanksgiving dinner last Sunday was a great success. We had a wonderful turnout. Everyone seemed to have a great time. Mm -hmm. So don't forget our Christmas dinner will be December the 10th. That's next Sunday. Two Sundays. Two Sundays. Two Sundays. I'm jumping ahead of time. Okay. I'm a time traveler. He's just hungry. <laughs> uh, you're, just, you're just hungry. <laughs> I did, yeah, I did <laughs> December 10th at 4.30 we'll do it the same way we did the Thanksgiving. We'll have dinner at 4.30 and then we'll have services that night. We will have morning services. So please uh, remember that in prayer, if you will. Now, this morning I want to preach a very, very simple yet profound message. I've heard James say many a time that Brother Bud's favorite chapter in all the Word of God was John chapter 14. And for me, one of my favorites, and probably is the favorite chapter in all the Word of God, is 1 John chapter 5. So if you would, turn your Bibles into 1 John chapter 5. I want to talk this morning on how can we know for certain that which is certain. How can we know for certain that which is certain? Now, if you watch the news and you read the newspaper, you quickly come to the conclusion that there's not a whole lot of people in this world that are happy. It's basically an unhappy world. Uh, you hear statements like, well, I just, and this is coming from people that are supposed to be experts, okay? So well, I, I just don't know what's going to happen in the Middle East. Well, I, I don't know what's going to happen in China and Taiwan. I, I don't know what's going to happen in Iran and North Korea. 
I don't know what's going to happen in mm -hmm. Russia and Ukraine. Yep. We're full of these statements, and they come from people that are supposedly in the know. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to know. Now, we're living in an uncertain world. In a world in which it seems that everything that was once nailed down is now coming up. We are in an uncertain world. So how can we know that which is certain will be certain? Mm -hmm. <laughs> First John chapter 5 verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Listen, this morning I want to talk to you about that which is certain in an uncertain world. Yes, these things have I written unto you that you may know that you that believe on the name of the Son of God may know beyond a shadow of doubt without any uncertainty that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Christ is surely saying here that anyone who believes on the name of the Son of God, you may not only know that you have eternal life, but you may be certain that you have eternal life. Amen. You know it, and it is a certainty. Yeah. It is without question. No, no holds barred. You have it. This is God's certainty. In an uncertain world. Yeah. Now, when God says, these things are written unto you that you may know. I'm going to take this verse of scripture today. I'm going to ask you some questions about it. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to tell you what it says. I'm going to tell you what it does not say. And then we're going to come to a conclusion. So, in one's heart, in every human being on the face of this earth, there is a longing for assurance and security. Mm -hmm. It's a human nature thing. We have it. We want to know what is our life expectancy going to be like after this life? What's going to happen when we die? So, psychologist tells us that the longing for security and assurance is the most basic of longings for a human being. They want to know what they believe, especially when it comes to spiritual, because they know that spiritual is eternal. They want to know what's going on, okay? So, when it comes to the question of where you're going when you die, that's something that you want to know for sure. Mm -hmm. That's something that you don't want to be unanswered questions about. You want to know where are you going? What's going to happen to me once I die? This morning I want to ask you some very simple questions. And then I'm going to give you the answer to these questions from this verse. The first question I want to ask is, is it possible to know? Is it possible to know that you have eternal life? Or said another way, is it possible to know that if you laid your head on the pillow tonight and you didn't wake up, would you go to heaven? 
Is it possible to know? Now, some of the most intelligent people that's ever lived on the face of this earth have told us that for us to think we have eternal life is sheer presumption. Since you, you may think it, you may wish it, you may even assume it that you have eternal life. But they say you cannot know. <clears throat> but is it presumptuous in the light of God's word? No. It's not at all. He says, I am writing unto you. He says, hey, I'm not only going to tell you, I'm going to put it in black and white. I'm writing unto you that what? That you may know that you have eternal life. Right. So, he says, I tell you in my words that you have it. I put it in writing. Now, why do you think you may be put it in writing? Have you ever doubted your salvation? Probably everyone sitting in this room at one time or another has doubted their salvation. <laughs> So he said, just in case you forget what I said, I'm going to put it in black and white. I'm going to put it down. I'm, I'm writing these things unto you that you may know. So when that little doubt comes up in your mind, you say, hey, I'm going back to 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that you may know. That you that believe on the name of the Son of God have eternal life. Yeah. It's very simple. Uh, when it comes to where you're going to go when you die, God doesn't want any question marks. He wants it perfectly clear that if you believe on the name of the Son of God, you have eternal life. Now, is it possible to know? Yes, it is possible to know. But some people say you will never know. They even say, these very intellectual, smart people say that there's no way you're going to know until you stand before the judgment day. Well, let me submit to you that if you're standing at the judgment day and you don't know, it's too late. That's right. Mm -hmm. It is entirely too late. You can't do anything about it at that time. Let's just look for a second at what this verse does not say. It does not say that I have written unto you that you may hope that you have eternal life. It does not say these things that are written unto you that you may think that you have eternal life. It does not say these things that are written unto you that you may assume that you have eternal life. That's good. How many times in your life, and I have to admit, I've got on my knees and I said, thank you, God. For 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, these things have I written unto you that you may know yes. that you have eternal life. I don't think about it. I don't hope for it. I don't assume it. I know. I have eternal life because I've asked his son to be my personal savior. <laughs> Let me just be dogmatically here. Is it possible to know that you have eternal life? Yes, yes, and yes. For your life, the Bible says that life is in the Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. Thank God I've got the Son. I have eternal life. 
How can we know for sure? How can we absolutely know for sure that we have eternal life? Because God said it. And because he put it in his hand. Let God be true and every man a liar. Heaven and earth may pass away. They may just get out of here. But my word shall not pass away. God said it. He wrote it. That's it. We have eternal life. Now, you realize that he not only said it, but he put it down. Right in black and white, right in front of you. That you can go back to it anytime you want to and reaffirm that you have eternal life in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this question. Who can know? Who can know? Who among us can know that we have eternal life? It's not a blanket coverage for all mankind. It's for a particular group of people. Thank you. God is writing and referring to only a select group of people. Who are those people? These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. That's the people. Anyone that believes on the name of the Son of God has eternal life. Anyone that does not believe on the name of the Son of God does not have eternal life. You know, I used to get upset when the Jehovah's Witnesses come knocking on my door. Until <laughs> I got to reading and studying his word and found out what it said. And the, it, it, the easiest answer to them is to ask them a question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Oh, no. Not. <laughs> it's that simple. To those, these things are written unto those who believe on the name of the Son of God. You have to believe that Jesus Christ died for you. God says only those who believe on his name in the beloved name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, can know without a question of a doubt that we have eternal life. That's who we are. But to believe means to trust. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. So what's God saying is this. I'm writing to all those who trust in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. That you may know that you have eternal life. That's good. Now, to get from this standpoint, a lot of people are trying to be Christian. But trying doesn't get you anywhere. It's only trusting that gets you somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. You have to trust in the name of the Son of God. Would you know, well, let me put it this way. Would you like to know how many people have become Christians by trusting in themselves? <laughs> no. Not a single one. How many have become Christians by trying to be a Christian? None. None. Not a single one. Now, some people say, well, you know, I'm going to die and do my best. I'm just going to do my best. That's all I can do. Well, if that's all you can do, you're in trouble. You have to trust and not try. If you're trusting in your best to become a Christian, watch this. The only way you can become a Christian by doing your best 
is to meet God's standard. Yes. What is God's standard? Perfection. How many of us can sit here today and say, I have never sinned, and I will never sin? <coughs> no. Zero. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. We cannot become a Christian by doing our best. We have to quit trying and start trusting. Yes. Trusting in the Lord and Savior. Now, you see, trying is self-effort. Mm -hmm. Trying is saying, I believe I can do it. Mm -hmm. Trusting is, I believe he did. Yeah, he did. He paid the price. Now, it does not say I'm writing to those who are trying their best to be a Christian. I'm writing to those who believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Now notice also when you read this verse that it does not say I'm writing to those who are Baptists. <laughs> I'm writing to those who are Methodists. I'm writing to those who are Presbyterians, Episcopalians, Roman Catholics, Pentecostal. Neither does it say I'm writing to those who have been baptized or sprinkled or confirmed yeah. or take communion. No, it doesn't say that. Nor does it say if you were brought up in a Christian home, you assume that you're going to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Listen, being brought up in a Christian home is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for God-fearing parents and grandparents that raise their children in Christian homes. Mm -hmm. But no one ever gets to heaven on the coattails of their parents or their grandparents. It's a personal relationship between you and Jesus Christ. Now, being brought up in a Christian home does no more make you a Christian than being born on a golf course makes you a golf club. <laughs> or being born in a gym makes you a basketball. Or being born in a garage makes you an automobile. <coughs> it has nothing to do with it. I will tell you this, if you're brought up in a Christian home, you have a head start. Because yeah. they're <coughs> going to tell you about Jesus Christ. Yeah. They're going to tell you about the one that died for you and gave his life that you may have eternal life. Your faith may be small. It may be the size of a mustard seed. But do you realize it's not your faith that saves? It's his faith. Amen. His great faith mm -hmm. that saves. Yes. His faith and his alone. Because Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Thank God for a Savior that loved me enough that he left the portals of glory, came to this earth, disguised as a man, in the, dwelt in the flesh and dwelt among us, and died on an old rugged cross so that you and I you have eternal life. Amen. And that life is in Christ. Yeah. My favorite two words, in Christ. Yeah. Now, do you know this morning that you have eternal life? Donnie, come and get a song. God says you can know it. You can know it because he said it. You can know it because he wrote it. And if there's any doubt in your mind, you go and you turn back to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13 and you read it again. 
These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know. No questions asked. None. That you have eternal life. And that you believe on the name of the Son of God. This is a promise that God gives us. It's a promise that we don't deserve. It's something that we have no claim that we had anything to do with. For God so loved the world that he gave the greatest gift ever given, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. That's the same thing as eternal. Yeah. Let's stand this morning and give him honor and glory. My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea, so burdened with sin and distress, till I heard a sweet voice saying, make me your choice, and I entered today, so bring your Christmas cards in. All that money goes to things on the church to help us. We, we bought lighting and signs and a little bit of everything with that money. It, it's gone really well, so thank you for doing that. So, anybody got anything on their heart before we go today? You said you just trusted him. Even that trust is you. <laughs> Even the trust he gave me. <laughs> 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 
Amen. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Good point. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else? Right there. Thank you. Well, Brother Jerry, would you dismiss us? We'll be back tonight. Hold on, Pat. What you got, honey? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what? You got a book? My old gravity voice may get to it and may not. It's in the it's in the phone book. It's in the phone book? Page four. Page four. Well, I hate that you gotta sit through this. <laughs> Or say, <laughs> if I can find it, there's two. I'm just glad that I know that I know that I know. <laughs> Amen. 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 Amen.